let's move on to our next question so uh, that we don't run out of time. So okay. what's your next question? For okay, people, David? so the second question that I wanted to get some feedback on was, what would contribute to immediate improvement in public uh, K-12 education? So as um, for those of you who have heard me speak on coffee hours, public education really is a priority for me personally. Uh, and I wanted to get some feedback. And so the choices that we identified uh, provide more autonomy to schools, um, put more air conditioners in the classrooms. <laughs> and you know, for those in the audience, it is super hot in this yeah. studio this so Sunday. So we can relate. <laughs> <laughs> so we can definitely relate to hot classrooms. Uh, third is more focus on science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, referred to as STEM education. And then fourth option is to push for more transparency for, from the DOE. So I suppose in the administration. Um, so let's see what the public or the people tuning in kind of view as um, what would provide most immediate improvement to the public schools. It looks like more transparency right now is okay. kind of winning the race. Now, why is it that my thing is all messed up? No. So did I did I mess uh -oh. this? I don't know, but here we, we have it right <laughs> okay, here. On the okay, okay. So okay. more transparency from the DOE again. Uh, how to do that? Well, you know, I do believe, and it's and it's funny, and we've said it, and it's actually sad, but funny. Our our um, our manage financial management system and our budgeting system is so old; they're manufactured discontinued. Uh, and the budget director used to come to the legislature and testify that he has more information about the finances of the state of Massachusetts than he has about the state of Hawaii because our systems are antiquated. Most of the things are kind of off the, off the system or manually kept track of. Mm. So putting in a modern financial management and budgeting system, I think, would provide lots of transparency mm -hmm. uh, and would allow us to get more transparency and for the Department of Education as well as all departments. Mm. So I do think that that's a, a good place to s start. You know, I have been disappointed that the board has chosen to stop having um, board meetings on the neighbor island because mm -hmm. I think that traveling to the communities and being able to uh, interact directly with um, with um, parents and teachers and constituencies on the neighbor island is very important. Um, and I think that that would uh, go a long way. And then, mm -hmm. you know, if we can do this and bring the legislative interactiveness into the Board of Education, I think that that would be a great opportunity as well. And what, what about STEM? What can we do about that? That's something near and dear to my heart, <laughs> science, technology, engineering, and math. Well, you know, I have been a big supporter of STEM as an electrical engineer. That is something that I've been very much involved with. So we have been, and we uh, funded for the first time two years ago, kind of about two and a half million dollars to the university to kind of organize uh, STEM activities in our public schools. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're focused on supporting the robotics program, right. uh, focused on supporting digital media and 3D animation and those kinds of programs. And then we've been uh, looking at applied learning programs and projects. So projects that engage and use um, smart devices, iPads and, and smartphones to really uh, begin to use the sensors and, and teach our kids to be able to uh, become more tech savvy in those mm. programs. And it all starts bottom up programs, so really looking for teachers that are engaged and work with them to develop curriculum and projects that really begin to bring the applied learning. You know, I really, especially in the STEM area, I really believe that applied learning is important. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone can relate to the traditional book learning and lectures. Right. And I've, I've always found that applied learning programs really allows uh, students to get more engaged and more excited about the technology. Uh, yeah. And the teachers do a, a fabulous job. There's so much opportunity for that right now with 3D printing and yes. all these well, things that kids can get their hands on that are relatively inexpensive, but you learn a lot. I was going to say, you know, and you know, five years ago, that would have been a, a $250,000 device, right. you know, and right. now the technology has moved where it, it almost becomes something that you could have in all, virtually every school. Right. And so I think that those kinds of things, you know, the whole maker movement mm -hmm. and trying to uh, give, 
you know, I'm always amazed that um, the 3D software now, you know, when we're going up and we are required to take mechanical drawing and trying to do these projections and everything to envision 3D, you know, and now you can so easy, get a free, right? a free yeah. program and app to, to really um, just build 3D looks and, you know, you can do the whole nine yards and, and rotate it and uh, do a bunch of things that is just was hard to visualize before. Very true.